Greetings, everyone. Uh, we call tonight's meeting to discuss the transportation situation, uh, its ramifications, and uh, really everything we can try to do to be flexible here at Great River. Um, and I apologize, it's been such an emergency situation this week, um, and we've been so busy dealing with it and other situations at the school that I haven't had the opportunity to put any sort of slideshow together or any sort of visual or anything like that. So y'all just get to look at uh, get to look at us as we talk tonight. Um, there will be a recording of tonight's session, so we will share it with the community at large. Um, and also the idea with a town hall meeting is that um, you all out in the audience get the opportunity to ask questions and have them answered as best as possible. Now, what I recommend for um, how we do that is not to use the chat, but to use the Q&A function. So if you're not that familiar with Zoom, um, you should see along the bottom of your screen a button that says Q&A. And if you click on that Q&A, you should be able to pose questions to the panelists. And we can organize the questions there and mark them as answered and all of those sorts of things. So it's really the easiest way for us uh, to answer your questions tonight if you do type them into the Q&A specifically. Um, I would love to do some quick introductions of the leadership team members, uh, leadership team members who are here uh, tonight and myself. My name is David Nunez. You probably know me, but I am the head of school here at Great River, and I'm also a parent here at Great River. I have two kids that go here in the eighth and ninth grade now this year. Um, Matt, can you introduce yourself? Sure. My name's Matt McElrath. He, him, his pronouns. I'm the director of student services, and uh, I will have now two children, first and third grade, so a parent as well. I'll hand it off to Stacy. Uh, my name is Stacy Krieger, she, her pronouns. I am the director of administration and I don't have any children, but I like to think I have about 790 of them. <laughs> uh, Nick. Hi, I'm Nick Bierman, he, him. I am the adolescent program director here at Great River and I'm also a parent of two elementary students. Lindsay, I'll throw it to you. Hi, everybody. I'm Lindsay Harches. I'm the Assistant Director of Special Education here at Great River. Um, I am not a GRS parent, but I feel like Stacy does. I feel a lot of care and ownership for our students here, so I'm glad to be a part of the team. And I will pass to Jordan. Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, Jordan Samajima, the Equity and Inclusion Facilitator here. Uh, I have a young daughter, but I am not a GRS parent. Uh, I will go ahead and pass it back to David. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Um, so let's dive right into it, right into the situation. Um, and then I will answer some questions that we've received generally, and then also give you all the opportunity to ask some questions through that Q&A function on the bottom of your screen. Um, so we learned on Monday afternoon that our transportation provider, Minnehaha Transportation, um, has been sold to North Star bus, li bus Lines. Now, this information was totally new information to us, um, and um, not to not well, not to throw anyone under the bus. Sorry for the bad pun, um, but that uh, you know, our the owner of the company previously really should have reached out and given us more of a heads up that something was coming, but they did not. So we literally found out all of this information on Monday afternoon, and based on the decisions that they were making in restructuring, North Star, uh, the the new company, informed us that the only way they can continue serving our bus routes at Great River is if we change our school start time to 9 a.m. Now, the reason for this is because they need to be able to have a whole bus route at a whole different school run before um, run before our school gets the buses and the drivers. The time in which we were previously running our school left it so that um, it didn't leave time before or after for uh, an additional bus route to be run. And what that means is that uh, it would be almost a part-time bus driver, um, which none of the drivers they have really want that capacity. Um, and so if you're familiar with at all or have heard at all about the bus driver market right now, um, it is hard to find bus drivers and hard to keep bus drivers. And all of the companies that are running buses are really struggling with this. 
Um, so they needed us. Um, they are only offering us the opportunity to remain with them as a company if we run at a time that allows them to run a route before us, to run a whole different school before us. Um, and schools can only start so early. And so that leaves us with a 9 a.m. start time. Start time, excuse me. Um, the news completely caught us off guard. Um, and it translates um, to a change, I think, um, that we would never choose to put on families at this point in the summer, to be absolutely clear. You know, it, if we were to be making a time change to the start or end times of the school year, our goal would be to notify families in the spring and also to have, you know, really clear reasons and, and communication about it uh, across the board. So this last minute communication um, is was really out of our hands and um, also uh, has put us in a, in a place that is a place of frustration for us as well. Um, it's also clear to us that uh, I'm sure this will be a question people will ask that changing bus companies at this point is impossible. What we know is that uh, a year ago, we looked into changing bus companies um, to try to get uh, some different customer service options for our busing. Um, and we're looking at bus companies six months before the start of the school year. And even at that point, with six months of runtime, most of those companies weren't even returning our calls because we're a small school with only four routes and very few companies are even interested in picking us up. So the idea that we could change bus companies um, now uh, is is really off the table um, with two weeks to go before the start of the school, two full weeks to go before the start of the school year. Um, what that means is that we had to make the hard decision to shift Great River school day a half an hour later um, from 8.30 to 3.20 to 9 o'clock to 3.50. Um, we know this a shift has a huge, serious impact on many families and on their plans for before and after school care. Um, and that's why we honestly sent the communication as quickly as we could on Tuesday. We sent it out um, knowing that there would be a lot of questions, knowing that we would have um, to plan this session to offer answers to more people as best as we could. Um, and we know that um, also that we're continuing to, to work through the situation and continuing to try to be flexible and work with families and their needs in a way that um, that, uh, that means there's, there's more information potentially to come, but um, at the same time, this is, it, it felt an, like an urgent need to let you know as soon as possible is my point. Um, what the bus company has communicated with us so far, um, I sort of spoke to already this idea that we have to share a bus route with another school. That doesn't mean we'd have kids, our kids on the same time as their kids on the bus. It means, you know, the bus driver would run a full route for another school before it runs on a route in the morning and in the afternoon. Um, and, um, of course, I wanted to say tonight a couple things about the fact that we will be you know, deeply flexible, as flexible as we can be when it comes to trying to help and support our families through this um, challenging change. We already had one family reach out for, well, we've had a number of families reach out, but we had one reach out, for example, to say that their elementary students are going to have to leave early for the time being, at least for two days a week. Now we're going to work with that family to try to figure out a plan to make that possible. We're hoping we can quickly get to the point where they won't have to leave early at all. Um, but uh, with the short time span that we have to figure this out, we're going to be as flexible as we possibly can. Before school time is a key question that's on a lot of families' minds right now. We know that. Um, Big Canoe is our, if you're not, if you're an, uh, an adolescent family or a new family and you're not familiar with what Big Canoe is, it's our before school and after school program for elementary students. Um, they are going to be shifting their time slightly so that they run from 745 to 545. Um, this is um, because of the, the shift in the school day, because of the nature of the work shifts that the employees are going through. Um, and also, we didn't want to shift all of Big Canoe a whole half an hour later and not start until 8 a.m. 
Um, we had about four families last year, I believe, that were dropping off as early as 730. And Karen has been reaching out to those families individually to have some conversations with them about that drop off time and what they need and what we can do to potentially support them through this change as well. Um, if you uh, need to make uh, before or after school reservations for an elementary school student or a timing change, please contact Big Canoe at greatriverschool.org. Um, reach out to Karen as the person who answers that email. And ideally, we would love to have this information by tomorrow, by August 18th, if you can get it to us. Um, the idea is that we need to make these changes, including staffing changes, um, quite suddenly. And if we go from having 30 big canoe students in the morning to having 60 big canoe students in the morning, we are going to be really desperate to try to find the staffing to cover that sort of a change. And so we need to know as soon as possible um, if you're going to need additional uh, big canoe time or morning time that you haven't had, or maybe big canoe and you've never used it before. Um, fee information um, will be posted to the website around Big Canoe when it's all finalized. Um, and all registered families will get a communication from Big Canoe regarding the changes to fees and reservations. And Karen's very good at reaching out to all the families that use Big Canoe. But if you're new to it, make sure you reach out to us right away. Um, before school time for adolescents. We are trying to figure out what um, some sort of a plan might look like, but I have to be honest to you, I'm not. Sh we're not sure um, how to actually support adolescent students before um, the doors open. Now, to be clear, the doors open right now. Staff hours are set at eight thirty to four thirty, um, and so. Uh, uh, we're talking to staff about what that means and, and working with them and their schedules, of course. Um, but that also means that we don't necessarily have staff to supervise students before that time. The front doors of the school will open at 830. The adolescent wing doors open at 830, I believe, too, um, because they opened at eight previously. Um, and the uh, green the green flag it's a green flag, right? Okay. Suddenly I panicked and thought it was a blue flag. Um, the green flag will go up um, at 8.50, which is half an hour later than it was previously scheduled to go up at 8.20. So um, the issues that come with this situation and trying to figure out this situation for us as a school is scheduling, the scheduling of staff, the interest of staff in terms of um, their schedules and their potential um, work schedules, if people are able to take up extra hours and potentially able to work things like Big Canoe, um, and also budgeting and the impact to the school. Um, staffing is very expensive here at Great River. About half of our annual budget is staff salaries and benefits. And it's uh, our biggest single expense by far. Um, and so it gets really challenging for us to try to figure out um, how we're going to pay for things like extended big canoe care and um, all of that. Um, and so we will be communicating any fee changes for big canoe, but also know that for families where it is a hardship to uh, pay for a service like big canoe for elementary students, um, we are um, willing to talk to those families and we do have some scholarship information for those families as well. Um, the other thing we've been working with is our school union. We are uh, recently unionized, um, and the union has been great working with us so far, but it is also a complication to this entire process to be working with staff schedules and staff needs um, through the union specifically. Um, and uh, we, are, we are frantically working together to figure out how this will all work and how this will all fit. Some of the questions we've gotten so far, I wanna run through those first and then run through any questions that you all might have here tonight. But some of the questions we've gotten so far, uh, one question is that we've gotten several times is asking for what are, will the times be on the bus routes? So we have sent all of the information, our, our routes information, our stops information, our students who have registered for the school buses to the bus company. And um, they have not yet gotten us the route times, but we are asking them to do that as soon as possible. And we will get that out to families as soon as possible. Um, if you, any 
uh, leadership team member who has any more information about that is welcome to jump in and correct me if I said that wrong. But um, what will be the times for drop off and pick up? So again, we're shifting everything half an hour later, which means right now the front doors of the school will open at 830, along with the doors to the adolescent wing half an hour later than last year. And the elementary green flag will drop or um, go up at 850 half an hour later than it went up at last year. Some questions others that we've been asked are, why can't we just change bus companies? Um, I spoke to that a little bit already, but we uh, have trouble finding a bus company that's willing to serve our four routes as is. And actually, this new bus company um, is actually going to be charging us uh, additional money for each route each day. So it's costing us more money, this this change uh, to a new bus company as a school. Um, but we also know that we don't have uh, any ability to go out and find another company, given that there are just a few weeks till the start of the school year. Um, we also have very little leverage, as I said earlier, that um, bus companies are struggling to find drivers right now. Bus companies are struggling to retain their existing drivers and to cover the routes that they are being asked to cover by their schools. So um, it doesn't give us a lot of leverage as a small school looking to try to find a new company. I did reach out and have a conversation with uh, a gentleman who uh, I've known for a number of years who runs a bus company. Um, and the, uh, I mean, he was he was very clear with me that now is not a time that anyone would pick up any new routes. Um, but also just having a conversation about what it would mean for us to even be looking for a new bus company for next year, the timeline we'd have to look for that and, and what that would mean for us as a school. Um, what would happen if we refused to change our start time? Um, that means we would have to go without buses. Um, it would make it impossible for a lot of families to continue sending their children to Great River, to be honest. We have over 200 students who are registered to use the school buses out of our 800 students. Um, and uh, also, to be honest, that um, the lack of busing um, would impact all of those families very deeply, and many of them may not be able to come to Great River. Um, but also, uh, there is certainly a correlation between the student, the families that use our buses and some of our most under-resourced families as well. And so it does feel to me the existence of buses and the existence of our school buses feels like an equity issue to me, um, that we continue to serve those families in that way. Um, why is it happening so last minute? Again, a merger between the two companies occurred this summer, and we had signed a contract with the first company with Minnehaha, and only learned on the 14th on Monday that um, this company had been bought and that they're changing a name to Minnehaha Bus Lines, um, and that they're operating under the umbrella of North Star Bus Lines, Bus Lines. Um, and um, it also, to be honest, appears that the merger is, hasn't been as smooth as they originally hoped and expected. And so they are really short drivers and staff at this time and are working to hire enough drivers to maintain all their pre-existing routes. Um, and so they are um, not taking on new schools, I'm sure, as well, but um, working really hard to serve the, stu the, the schools that they are committed to working to at this time. Um, as I said, there's also a rate increase with this um, new bus company, which the school is working. I'm working hard with the school's accountants to figure out exactly how we're going to be managing that. Um, could rate Great River School run its own buses? Um, this is a question that comes up every now and then. Um, buses are, it's not something that I will definitively say would never happen. Um, it would be something that would uh, be an idea for future years, given how complicated an undertaking it would be. You know, a school bus, a new school bus anyway, probably costs upwards of $100,000. Then you have to hire drivers. Uh, and uh, uh, have a contract with the drivers, um, employ them, pay their benefits, um, and do all of those costs up front um, before you're necessarily getting money from the state for transportation at all. So um, a complicated factor, uh, a complicated process, to say the least, if we tried to move in that direction, um, and definitely not something we could do in, in a short amount of time. 
Um, lastly, what do I do as a family or as a parent if I just don't know how to make this change work is a question that we've gotten. Um, we anticipate certainly that more families will need access to Big Canoe before and after care. Please let us know at Big Canoe as soon as possible. Um, please let us know um, what your needs are and what problems that you are coming across. We are working family by family to try to support families and try to come up with solutions that will work for them and will work what will work with us. Um, and um, it isn't a simple process and it's a very condensed timeline. We don't have a lot of time to figure this out. I know that, but we are working very hard to be as flexible as possible and try to make a plan as best as possible. Um, should we uh, have more information to release um, in the coming you know, days and weeks? Um, should we figure out a solution for adolescent students for the morning, for instance? Um, we will be communicating that as soon as we have that information available to us. Um, and so we um, are open to the idea, but are working on the details, definitely. Um, also, if your child receives special education services, um, you can certainly communicate with Lindsay Harches, who's here tonight, the special education assistant director, um, and uh, any questions you might have about that, um, she'd be happy to answer and get back to you as well. So um, those are the questions that we've fielded electronically by email so far. Um, I see there are some Q&A questions as well. Um, Stacy, you- Yeah, I can take over. I see several okay. of them are questions that I would answer anyway. Um, okay. and so, Go ahead. Um, uh, Michael, I see you're raising your hand. It would be great if you could type your question in. Um, if, if you can't type it in, then we can maybe get you allowed to speak. Um, so one person asked, what if communication we have, what if any communication will we have with the bus route during the winter time and impacts that weather might have um, and what it means for my workload? Um, I think it'll be, I actually don't know 100% because I know how many haha -ha transportation worked, which was we rarely heard anything from them if the bus was going to be late. And so it would be the people who are down there with kids calling me to say, hey, where's the bus? It's not here. And then me contacting many haha -ha about it, um, which is why that communication always seemed so last second. Um, I'm hoping that with the umbrella support of North Star, the they do have better customer service systems. I'm hoping that that will change a little bit and hopefully they'd be like, hey, this bus is running late. Um, but I don't know yet what exactly it's going to look like. Um, all I know is that if I know, if I know it's going to be, you know, a half hour late or 20 minutes late, I'm going to let you know as, as much as I can. Um, and it'll be the same workload, I think, as it always has been. Uh, the time after school is, is always kind of a, I don't know if I'm going to get, um, having to do urgent communications or not. I'm going to ask the, answer the other bus questions before I ask the other ones. Um, so Elizabeth, you had asked, um, what should you do if you signed up for the morning bus, but now you need to move to Big Canoe? If you've already communicated with Big Canoe about that and signed up, that's great. If you haven't, you should contact Big Canoe at greatriverschool.org. Um, for let it, you can just let me know. I'm going to, once I get the information about the new bus times, I'm going to me email everybody who had signed up for the bus and, and tell them. And you can just respond to that email at that point saying, I don't need it anymore. You could send me an email right now at transportation at greatriverschool.org to let me know you don't need it. Um, and we'll get it updated and make sure we're not um, looking yeah. for your student on the bus. Um, Let's see here. Question, if Great River changes to a different bus company next year, would the school time change again, possibly? Um, I think that's a big question. One of the things when we talk to other bus companies, if we are able to even get an answer from them, they're always like, oh, well, how could you change your time in order to fit into our tiers? Um, so that's always kind of been a thing. I don't know if we'd be able to change back to 830. I don't know if we would have to change again um, until we are in the negotiations with a new bus company, potentially. So. Um, I don't know if David, you have anything to add that is kind of a, I hope not. And if that were the case, it, while we're talking to another bus company and trying to line that up, it would happen earlier in the year, ideally, not two weeks before the school year starts. That's all I was going to add is that we would never, you know, necessarily in any way make a decision like this if we had any control over it of just a few weeks before the school year starts. So um, if we do negotiate with another bus company, it will be in the spring and we would be communicating with families and, and trying to assess family needs as part of that process, I think. Um, and then Laura, you asked, 
how can we sign up for the morning bus routes? Um, just uh, if you don't have access to the link to the form, just email transportation at greatriverschool.org and ask for it. And you can sign up using the link, the commitment link to the form. Let's see here. Pete Goss, you asked about after school sports. Um, you have a student that participates in Academy Force Football, which start practices start at four. Um, and you're wondering if it's possible for your student to be released early to make it to football practice. I think we could work with you. There's an indie work every day for our 12th grade students. So your student would already have an indie work at some point in that day. And we could look at the schedule to see if it's at all possible to make sure that indie work is the last hour of the day. Um, there's a chance it's not possible, in which case you'd have to work. Nick, you can answer differently if you need to. You could work directly with the teacher to see um, what you could do to leave class early and what you'd have to make up. And Nick's giving me the thumbs up on that answer. So first, I would say email me. Um, if you don't know me, it's skrigger at greatriverschool.org or office at will get me, transportation at will get me. I answer a lot of emails. Um, and I can look at the schedule because I build those schedules and see if I can change it for your student as needed. Um, under, appreciate the difficulty of the situation. Does it mean the school day schedule will potentially change next year again? How can GRS be proactive to no changes in a more timely manner for next year? I think I sort of talked about that in my last one. Am I, like If we'll be looking at other bus companies from the start, maybe we'll continue with North Star if they're going really great, um, but I'm hoping we would do that much earlier in the year. Um, we had signed a contract with this bus company, you know, this spring, and ideally we'd be doing it much earlier so you would know if we have to make changes much earlier. Um, Michael Day asks, do you have demographic data on bus dependency? Um, their child rides the bus and we are never pulled as to whether we actually depended on it. I don't pull people on that. I assume that if they are riding the bus, it's because they need to, because our bus service for the last, it's never been super great. <laughs> um, it, it does its job. Timing is not super dependable. Um, a lot of people, if they aren't happy, you know, don't like how flexible they need to be, don't use it. And I assume those people don't depend on it as much. Um, I don't know, David, you have a different answer for that other than, I assume if they're using it, they need it. I think that's true. I mean, anecdotally, I think that there have um, uh, that there, you know, have been a lot of conversations with parents who definitely rely upon it pretty heavily um, and wouldn't use it if they didn't rely upon it heavily because of frustrations with it in the past. So I think anecdotally, that's true. I also think that given the time frame that we're in, it would be very difficult to necessarily um you know, I pull all of the families to try to figure out dependency on it and percentages of that and compare it to, you know, and and hold off the decision any longer. The bus company needed an answer from us about the dust, about, you know, are you going to go with us like immediately? And so uh, there was a lot of pressure to make a, a particular decision. And um, we discussed it at length as a leadership team and felt like it was, you um, that it was the the decision that we needed to make. So, Sandy Jorgensen is asking um, if you think we could prepare ourselves for an increased likelihood that buses end up routinely running late, given their running service for a different school before us. That's actually an interesting question because our buses the last couple of years have always been tiered, but I don't. They must have been tiered with a school that ran earlier enough, or the route before us was short enough that they could get to us by eight, by eight thirty in the morning, and with what's going on with this change means they just can't get to us. They're like, the earliest we can get to you is nine o'clock with our tier system. Um, and so we're in a, so we've always had that as a thing. And we knew that in winter weather, when it was icy, if they got behind because the school before us was behind, it was definitely going to be slower for us. Um, and I think that will continue to be about the same, Hope, hopefully not worse. Um, GRS doesn't have a real bus service. It's car dependent schools with a great number of people driving from far away. Uh, everyone who rides the bus with our child, child drives their child to the bus stop and queues up there rather than at GRS on the line. I mean, I understand that I would say, um, because we have satellite stops because part of the reason our transportation is the way it is, is because we have as a charter school that lives within the boundaries of St. Paul, we have to serve any first through sixth grader that lives within the boundaries of St. Paul. If we were, you know, at St. Paul Public Schools, 
uh, Central High School only has to serve the kids in the neighborhood that go to that school. And Central is a bad example because it's a high school, but an elementary school only has to serve the people in the neighborhood where they are and they they don't have to serve the entire city of St. Paul. So we have made our bus service so that we can get as many people as possible um, on the bus and serve as many people as we can. And we just can't, we don't have the ability to run I don't know how many buses we'd need to run to get closer to everybody's house. Um, so our uh, the rule is within you have to be within two miles of a stop if you're within St. Paul. If you're in Minneapolis or one of the border stops that we run, then you just got to get to our border stop. We can't go too deep into Minneapolis. Um, and I know that is it's definitely different than what you would see at a, a traditional public school that's tied to the district. Anything to add to that, David? Not specifically, I think, yeah. Will you consider moving advisor indie work to the end of the adolescent schedule so it can accommodate students who are working in sports or having lessons? I'll, Nick, do you have, want to field that one? Yeah, hi. Uh, the schedule this year has changed, actually, so we no longer have indie work um, in the mornings or, like, we don't have a common indie work time on a daily basis like there used to be. Um, it's now like scheduled throughout the day. Um, so they, I mean, they still have Wednesday indie work where we have a common indie work time in the morning. Um, but on a daily basis, that's not on the schedule anymore. So that, you know, in last year's schedule, yes, that would be possible in this year's schedule. No. Yeah. And part Although of the, maybe possible for, I mean, Stacy, you mentioned having a family reach out if they need indie work at the last period of the day. And there will be some students who have indie work at the last period of the day on certain days of the week. And so, um, you know, if there's a specific need that we can try and address, um, we will do our best. And it's just, it's not guaranteed um, yeah. because of how the schedule is built. And part of the reason for that change in the schedule is um, through the union contract that we negotiated, every teacher needs two preps. And in order to make that happen, we had to move indie work. So it's sprinkled throughout the day uh, rather than everybody having it at the same time. Um, Steph says, I am new to the school. Does everyone ride the bus or can everyone ride the bus? Um, so our policy is that we serve everyone in first through sixth grade. Um, we have to try to get within two miles of their house if they're within St. Paul. Um, they can get to one of our satellite stops in Minneapolis. Um, and if you're in seventh through 12th grade, you're you can get a Metro Transit pass um, and every student who's seventh through 12th can use that. If you're in seventh to, through 12th grade um, and you live really close to a bus stop and you wanna use that, you can apply, you can request a spot on the bus. And if there is room, I will let an adolescent student ride the bus. Um, however, if one, our one of our buses fills up with elementary kids and I don't have extra seats on that bus, um, I would have to turn down adolescent students from riding the bus. I haven't had to do that yet, but ridership does keep increasing. What I'm seeing is that um, the students who've been riding through all of elementary turn into seventh graders and they want to keep riding because it's just part of their system. And then they want to keep riding through high school. So um, the more students that try to do that, um, then they'll, you know, I might get to a point where I have to turn adolescents down. Um, do you have any data on why it wouldn't have been advantageous to simply drop buses for the year. Are you already anticipating large numbers of people will now do more driving to get their kids to school early? How many people who are driving the bus stops are just going to drive their students in? I think we'll definitely see a shift in bus usage one way or possibly the other. We may see a number of families who want to use buses now who hadn't previously because of a need. So we're going to see a lot of changing, I think. Um, and I'm very curious to see how those numbers will pan out in the end. Um, but, you know, we made a decision based on the data as best as we had it. I'm sorry if you guys can hear that. There's a vacuum cleaner in the office right next to me. Hold on a second while I close my office door. <laughs> and I can say that I know it's not every student who rides the bus that needs it um, or else they wouldn't come to Great River School. But I know that there are families that absolutely do need it. I've been in communication with them. I've worked with them to make sure busing works for them. Um, otherwise, they wouldn't be able to come to Great River. And I do know that those are some of those students I've been working with in that way are the students who would not be able to continue going um, if it if we weren't to have busing. And it is it is, as David said earlier, very much an equity issue. Um, people that don't have the resources to drive their kids to school, who don't have vehicles, who work jobs that they can't 
change their schedules in that way. Okay. Um, again, I would just add that I know that it is a deep hardship on a lot of families. Um, I know the impact to um, families that have reached out to me directly so far, and I'm sure there are families that haven't reached out to us directly so far. So I'm sure the impact is very widespread. Um, we hear that we're willing to be as flexible as we possibly can, and we are working to try to make plans as best we can um, to support families, especially for this upcoming year um, or upcoming semester as they potentially make changes. So as any new information comes out, any new plans come out, anything we're able to figure out, we will be communicating all of that as quickly as possible. Is there anyone else on the leadership team who would add anything else? Is he shaking head? No. Okay. Well, we will... Um, wrap up for the evening, I think, um, based on the recording that we have. Um, we'll be sharing that out with the community, um, generally speaking. Um, and certainly you're welcome to reach out to transportation at or to me, D Nunez at, um, with direct questions as well. And we will continue to try to help and serve as many students as we um, as many student needs as we possibly can as we navigate this really frustrating situation. Um, so thank you all for coming tonight. I appreciate your time and uh, I appreciate all the work that goes into being a member of this community because I do think that we all do have to band together to deal with situations like this. And, and um, as frustrating as it is, it is an opportunity too for us to continue to help each other as a community. So thank you very much for coming tonight.